Well, welcome back everybody. I've been absent for a while and I've got a new fly for you. I've been fishing a lot and I've been having a lot of luck with walleye this spring. And I've been trying to design something that is simple with only three parts. I've got a Colorado blade here, a little bronze bead that I want it to sink to the bottom with, and then also a number two hook. So let's get started and I'll show you how this one works. So I'm starting out with a number two, but you can move up and down in size uh, as you like, but just make sure that whatever size hook you use matches proportionally to the size blade that you use. And you can see in the end there, I have taken a pair of pliers and just bent the eye of that blade so that when it sits on the shank of the hook it will be a little bit more um, in line with the bait. If you don't bend it then I feel like you're going to end up having the spinner blade sticking way up and it might not look right as you're jigging it off of the bottom. So I'm going to have to take the hook out. Make sure that when you're putting it back on, you are passing it through in the right direction. You want it to lay right. So I'll add the spinner blade, and then I'm going to go back in and add my little bronze bead at this point also before I chuck it back into the vise. Now this little bronze bead here is going to make sure that we get enough weight to sink down to the bottom because that's where my walleye are at. You can usually see them on the, the sonar hanging out down on the bottom. Send this down there and have it do its thing. So what I'm going to do is start to build a thread dam just underneath that bead to make sure that we don't have any movement uh, of shifting down. So I want it to be able to spin freely, but I also don't want it to be able to move too far down the hook. Now it is helpful to be using a worm hook that has these barbs on the shank, as you can see here, because that really helps to uh, lock the thread in place when I'm laying down these base wraps and I know that it's not going to move on me. So I'm going to take this down towards the bottom and then come in and snip my little tag end off. And then I'm going to continue taking that wrap down towards the hook itself. So with the first one that I tied, I did not add anything to it, the one I was showing to you earlier. I think with this one, I might just add a little tail, just to add a little bit of color. So I've got a little piece of feather here orange. I want as much flash as I can get if I can get this locked down. I just pulled that piece off. But that's okay. I think I think that's just enough for me to have a little bit of extra movement there on the back end of the bait. And now I want to make sure that I've built up enough mass on the front part here with the thread to lock that bead in place. You can see that spinner has stopped its motion horizontally. And I want to just leave a little bit of space so that I know that it can still spin freely. 
as it's passing through the water. So I'm going to move down, really lock these tail fibers in, and then try to, as I'm moving up, keep the body as even as possible. So I don't want there to be sections where it looks like it's not uh, it's not the same thickness and taper it so that the thickest part is up close to that bead at the front and when I get up there I'm going to leave a little bit of space because I'm going to add UV resin to this to lock all these threads to the body here and I want to make sure that I have enough space to pull the hook or pull the bead, excuse me, up away from that thread, add the resin, cure it, and then be able to not have the bead get stuck there. So what we'll do here at this point, do a couple more wraps. Sounds like a baby chick. My uh, bobbin needs a little bit of lube, I think. So, get a couple whip finishes in there. start applying the resin. I misspoke earlier. I said you weren't trying to get this bead locked in here, but I think it's okay if the bead gets resin on it. It's not okay if the spinner blade itself gets resin on it. So what I'm going to do is try to cover most of my thread. I love applying the resin because you really do add um, a lot of richness and saturation to that color of the thread, which, whichever color it's using or whichever color you decide to use. It doesn't have to be um, red, but I really think that that presence is the most enticing so once you get your resin on there with this needle that I have keeping close by at all times so that I can apply that evenly and I will get the light on it and what I've been doing recently not only did I get a new flashlight so I don't have to use my little uh, nail curing, but I also have a mirror that I'll put underneath to focus those UV rays back and cure the underside as well. Uh, because what I was doing before was putting my my flies in the vise, applying the resin on the top side, curing it, and then going back in, flipping it 180 degrees upside down, and then hitting it with the light. But I feel like this works a lot better. Um, you're getting more bang for your buck. The, the light's bouncing back off of that mirror below and curing the underside. And then you don't have to worry about any of these little hairs that are sticking up. If you get any stray hairs from the thread, what I'll do is go back in and just hit that with the lighter and it'll take those away. And what you have now is a little Colorado blade spinner here, spinner fly. I'm using it for walleye, but I really think that you could use it for just about anything, uh, panfish, or trout you might even get some bass 
to hit it if you tie it with a big enough uh, hook. But if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and you can see any finalized photos of these flies on my Instagram, which is bhi.flies. And thanks for watching. Catch you all next time.